Today, I'm gonna to show you guys how you can make your own DIY plant shelves with wheels so you can move it wherever you want. So the reason I wanted to make some plant shelves was because I don't have a ton of space in my apartment for plants. And as y'all saw in the last video, which will be right here, I, for some reason, accumulated over 50 plants in the last year. And so I wanted to be able to have more of them in one spot. So like taking care of them would be easier. I wouldn't have to run from room to room every day to check on them for watering. And also I live in a place that has high humidity or higher humidity and some decent heat throughout the summer, which can be really beneficial to plants. So with the combination of grouping plants together plus the high humidity outside, I felt that having shelves that would fit on my small patio would be the perfect solution. Also, I wanted the shelves to have wheels on them so that whenever the temperature starts dropping below 50 degrees, I can just move them inside. And if I wanna move the plants around after that, it'd be easier, but I wouldn't have to actually move all the plants by hand. Since the shelves had wheels, I can just wheel them straight through the door and it would be so much easier. If you wanna see more DIYs like this one, please give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Also, ring that bell icon so you will be notified every time I post a new upload. All right, if you wanna know how to make your own DIY plant shelves, then keep watching. Here's a list of the things that you will need. I got all of my stuff from Home Depot and then I will also link it down below. I used one one by 10 by 10 piece of wood. I believe I used pine and it needs to be cut into three 40 inch pieces. Eight half inch by 12 inch PVC risers three half inch by 36 inch PVC risers. You will also need four rolling casters. I bought a box of 100 number 10 by 3 4 wood screws and that wasn't more than enough to finish the project. Some wood stain, some spray paint. You will need 18 half inch iron flanges and two half inch elbow joints. The only tools I used for this project was a Ryobi circular saw. I used a Ryobi power drill and a Ryobi sander, which I only have a corded sander, but I'm hoping to get the cordless sander. And what's really nice is their tools are super affordable, especially if you have the battery. So to start, you're gonna take the 12 inch PVC risers and attach two half inch flanges on either side. It is definitely helpful to do this before spray painting. That way you can sit the poles up and access them easier and they're not rolling around. And then you were gonna attach one half inch iron flange to one end of two different 36 inch risers and then connect those two using your last 36 inch riser and two iron half inch elbow joints and that'll create a horseshoe shape so you'll take these and spray paint all of them i just laid down some plastic and i use a matte black spray paint from rust-oleum so give these a couple of coats of spray paint and while this is drying you can go ahead and cut your wood and stain your wood so i definitely recommend if you are new to power tools one read the manufacturer's instructions. They're typically very helpful. And then make sure you have a speed square. This definitely makes creating accurate measurements and cut lines super easy because you don't have to wonder if the measurement on each side of the wood is even. So when you draw your line, the speed square, just make sure you have a perfect 90 degree guideline. And you can also use it and clamp it to the wood as a guide, but I don't have my clamps with me. So I just eyeballed it since I knew these shelves were gonna be for me. Having perfectly straight lines wasn't, as dire. So once your wood is cut, you'll take it and you can either sand it by hand, which would not take much time. I just used my hand sander to get down some of the rough spots, make sure that the areas I cut were sanded down so, I, so it didn't have any splinters poking out. And then I took my Varathane stain and the Tint Special Walnut and I gave each side of the boards just one coat of stain. So once you have the PVC spray painted, and your wood stained and sanded, you can start putting it together. So I got the ideas and the blueprint for this shelf from freshmommyblog.com and I will definitely link that down below. And this really takes like 30, 45 minutes. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna start with the bottom of the bottom piece of wood and you are gonna screw in the four castings and you're gonna just use four screws that screws right in. Um, I use wood screws so I didn't pre-drill any holes, although you are more than welcome to. So I screwed in the four casings, flipped the board over and then attach four of those PVC flange towers that we made, attach those to the four corners of the top of the board. Once you have one shelf with the wheels on the bottom and the PVCs on the top, you'll take your next shelf 
and put it good side down on the floor, then take the first one we put and flip it upside down. And that's how we're gonna go about building off each of these shelves. We're gonna take the full shelf and put it upside down on the next board. So then just apply your screws. The one thing about this project is it's definitely a lot of screws, um, four screws per little flange. So that's what takes the time. But or once you get the third shelf on, flip it back onto the wheel side and then you can attach the horseshoe shape we made and that will be what you use to put the hanging plants on. So now I'm gonna take it outside and show you how I decide where I'm gonna put which plants. So they're all in this room featuring the dog. Hello, dog. And I'm gonna take these and put them outside. Okay, so I was looking around trying to figure out what the best strategy is. And I think what I'm gonna do is first put all of the plants that I know aren't going outside back in their spot. So the ZZ plants, the things that I know are super tolerant and will thrive wherever. So my ZZ plants are gonna stay inside and my snake plants are gonna stay inside and my rubber tree plants are gonna stay inside. So I think I'll start with those and then I will start putting the plants that I know I want outside definitely to give them a better shot, like the ones that aren't looking too hot. So the um, tricolor plant, the calatheas, the pinstripe plant, then I'll probably do the hanging plants because they can hang in here, but since there's a hanging bar on the shelf, I wanted to try that out. So I'll put the hanging plants outside, then I will put the herbs outside, and then from there, we will just see what happens, see how much space we have and what we can work with. This is what we got going on so far. I think what my method ended up being is I'm putting the ones that I can forget about a little bit on the lower shelves. I'm getting the ones I can forget about a little bit on the lower shelves and the ones I actually need to pay more attention to on the higher shelves. So we, don't, we have these left. I already put some back, but these are what we're gonna use to fill up this space. So one thing to pay attention to is the height of the shelves. So these are 12 inches long, which means that your taller plants will not fit, or they might fit, but they will be crushed up against the top. So that's something to be careful of whenever you are putting your plants in different places. The taller ones, like that fiddle leaf fig, or, ah, falling, like that fiddle leaf fig, or this tricolor plant, I knew had to go on the top shelf since they are too tall to hang out with the short guys down here. So if you made it this far in the video, comment down below and let me know which types of DIYs do you want to see me make on this channel. That is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you back on Tuesday with a new video. I hope you all have a great day. Bye. Can you just let me do what I need to do?